Hi, and welcome to Meetings and Math. Today we're looking at solving equations with variables on both sides, but we're looking also at a special case. What happens when you solve an equation and suddenly you have no variables left in your equation? So let's look at what you need today. You need something to write with, a pen or a pencil, your Jaguar jot, it should say 1.3 at the top, but make sure your essential question is what happens when you solve and there are no variables left in your equation. A calculator might be handy either on your computer or your phone or even a standalone. And as always bring those problem solving skills so that you can think critically about what we're doing. So let's begin. Sometimes when you solve an equation, the variable is going to disappear and you end up with this thing where a number equals a number. And these are very special solutions. They are either no solution or infinitely many solutions. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to infinitely many solutions as just infinite solutions. Both are correct. We need to remind ourselves, how can you get all the variables to one side? And remember, you do that by adding or subtracting the variable term. So let's get started on these problems. So we have two problems here we're going to explore. And before we actually get to the answer, we're just going to solve them and then we're going to talk about what we think they mean. So again, the roads help us. So when we draw that line and remember, we're calling them the roads. It's just a way for us to organize into the left side and the right side. It helps our brain keep the work organized. And the first thing we need to decide is, am I going to keep my variables on the right side or the left side? And we just do this to help us organize our thoughts. So I'm going to put my X's on this side and my numbers on this side. And it's just so I can help myself go, okay, which term am I moving? So if I'm moving my X's to this side, that means this term right here is the term that I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to circle it. So I'm getting rid of that 2X. So the opposite of a positive 2X is a negative 2X. So 2X minus 2X and I am left with a negative one. And on this side, remember we said things were going to disappear. So two X minus two X, that disappeared too. It wasn't my intention to make it disappear, but it did. And I'm left with a one. And don't forget the equal sign. We're, <laughs> we're gonna come back to that. Let's come over here and do this problem. If this is bothering you, it should. Let's come over here. Since this looks nicer, I'm gonna put my G's on this side and my numbers on this side. And before I can do this problem, I actually need to deal with the distributive property. So one half of six G is three G and one half of negative four is a negative two. And I just have to write that down. So I've decided I'm keeping my G's on this side and my numbers on this side. So this one has to move. So that's a positive three G. So I'm gonna subtract three G from both sides. Now remember my intention was to get rid of this and it goes away. So I'm left with a negative two on the side. And now I need to combine like terms. But when I combine this three G and this negative three G, it too went away. That's zero. So I have these two situations now where my variables have gone away, I'm left with numbers. So that comes back to this idea, number equals a number. And so these are special solutions. One of these is going to be no solution and one of these is going to be infinitely many solutions because it seems like the variable doesn't matter. So it seems like the variable doesn't matter. What would happen if I substituted a number? So that's what we're going to do. Well, first, before we go to this, let's just talk about this statement. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Hopefully you're all looking at that saying that is a false statement. Let's just write that. Let's look at this one though. What would you say about this one? Is that a true statement or a false statement? That is a true statement. So that true and that false is going to be important in a little bit. So let's substitute in a number and see what happens. Um, I can substitute in any number. We're not going to pick zero because that is a poor one to choose. Let's choose five. Five is not that bad to work. So let's let X equal five and let's put it into the original 
statement and see what happens. Two times five plus one is equal to two times five minus one. So we'd end up with 10 plus one is equal to 10 minus one and 11 equals nine. Again, what happens? Again, we, we get a false statement, right? 11 doesn't equal nine. So it holds up this idea of a false statement. No matter what I'm putting it in, the variable doesn't matter. I end up with these false statements over and over and over again. Nothing's going to work. Well, if nothing's going to work, is X ever going, X not, this is falling apart. So when things start to fall apart, then what we have is no solution. And that is going to be your answer. The variable doesn't seem to matter. It didn't matter what I put it into. It fell apart. Does it, the variable didn't seem to matter. I got this. I got that it's not working. The variable didn't matter because it went away. I could put in anything I want. I'm still going to get a false statement every single time. So let's look at this one here. I'm going to still use x equals five. I'm going to put it into one half of six G minus four equals three G minus two. So one half of six times five minus four equals three times five minus two. So one half of 30 minus four equals 15 minus two. So 30 minus four is 26. 15 minus two is 13. 20, half of 26 is 13, 13 equals 13. Look at that, five worked. Look at this though. It's not gonna matter what I put in there. Negative two equals negative two. It's always going to work because the variable doesn't matter because it always works every single time. And so since it always, 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 always works, the answer to this is, we're going to have to turn our paper, infinitely many solutions. So if I substituted a number in for the variable, on this one, no variables are going to work. On this one, all variables are going to work. No variables will work here. On this one, all variables will work. Let's sum this up. Equations. Infinite solutions are when the answer, so when we talk about when the answer, we're talking about this part right here. Let me highlight that. We're talking about this part, that thing that we got in the very beginning. Infinite solutions are when the answer is true and no solution is when the answer is false. So that was today's lesson. It was about infinite solutions and no solutions. So what I would like you to do today is I would actually like you for both of these examples to pick another variable. So X equals pick another number for X and another number for G and substitute it in and see what happens. Just want you to give that one another shot. And thank you for showing up for today's lesson. And remember to be kind because everybody can use some extra kindness in their lives. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye now.